Here we have some data on weekly adjusted closing prices for the S&P and for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. What I'm going to do in this case is demonstrate how you can record a macro that will calculate the returns. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a very simple discrete return in this case. So if you aren't familiar with the formula, it would look like this. You take the ending price, in this case I'm taking January 13th in cell B8, divide it by the beginning price in B7, and subtract 1. And this will give me a one-week return during this period. You can see here should be 1.97%. Now what I'm going to do this time is record this, record myself performing these actions, writing this formula, and then copying it down. And so I'm going to use this macro recorder tool to do this. And you can find it, if you have the developer tab, you can, you can find it in here. But if you don't, you can also find it inside the view menu on the right hand side you'll see macros. And within this menu, you'll see the option to record a macro. So the first thing I'm going to do is record this out of the box. And it brings up this dialog box here. I have to give my macro a name, which could be you know anything short, simple. Um, you don't want any spaces or funky characters in the name of your macro. In this case, I'm just going to say calc return one word, no spaces. Now you see that you also have the option to add a keyboard shortcut key. You can do this if you like, it's not required, but if you wanted to run the macro quickly, you can use a keyboard shortcut. So here in this case, if I want to, I can choose something like Q and it would use control Q to go ahead and add a shortcut key. Now, if instead you want to maybe add a shift to that, you just hold down shift, and use the letter with the shift key. So now we have control shift Q is the shortcut to run this macro. Now in this case, I am going to just store this macro in this workbook. So I'll leave it like that. You can also add a description if you want in this box here. But once I hit OK, it'll start recording each of my actions. And, um, and then when I stop recording, it will convert those actions over to VBA code. So now we're recording and I'm going to go ahead and calculate my return. So again, you don't want to make this, um, you want to do things as efficiently as possible because you don't want to write extra lines of code. Here I'll go ahead and take the ending price divided by the beginning price, B8 over B7, minus 1 to get my return. Now I'm going to copy this down through the column. Um, but there's different ways, of course, that we can copy the data and it actually de depends on, you know, the actions that you take will have a different impact on the VBA code itself. So let me first show you what would happen if I use the mouse to copy down. Now, of course, I can use the auto fill handle, just grab that bottom right hand corner and double click or drag it down. And we should see this copy all the way through to the end of the data points here in July. Now I'll do one more thing. Maybe I'll just add some, some different formatting to this. Maybe I'll just make this orange just to change this up. And that's all I want to do with this macro. So I'm going to go ahead into the developer or the view menu and find macros and choose to stop recording my actions. Now that we've stopped recording, we can test this macro out and see if it actually does what we think it will do. So first thing is I'm going to just sort of undo or clear out what I did in this C column. I'll go ahead and sort of bring this back to what it looked like before. And now I can run my macro either using that keyboard shortcut I gave it, Control Shift Q, or if you prefer, you can go into the developer or the view menu and find macros, view macros. This will bring up all of the subroutines or macros that you have in your file. And of course you can run them right from here. So here, if I hit run, it should run that macro. I could have also done this using the 
using the shortcut that I gave it, Control Shift Q, would work just as well. So that works for the S&P, but the question then becomes, does it work when I move over to the E column? Does it work on the Dow Jones Industrial Average? And if you try this out, you'll find that it doesn't quite work the way we intended it to. It solves for the first cell, and then it jumps back over to the C column. Now, the reason for that is that our code was created using kind of the out-of-the-box method, meaning it used hard-coded cell addresses in the code rather than relative positioning. So, um, what I want to do is show you how you re can record this in a different way so that, I'll clear this out, so that it'll work in different places within the spreadsheet. So the first thing I would do here is go up to the view menu. You know, now that I've cleared it all out and I'm starting again in cell C8, view, macros, and I'll, re I'll record. But before I record, I'm going to turn on this feature here, use relative references. So if I click on that and you come back in here, you should see that it's sort of, it's hard to tell, but it, it is selected. The use relative references feature is now turned on. You can see if you see that it's not turned on, there's no gray around that little box, but if I click on it and go back in, it's now gray around that box, that little tiny box there. So the feature has been turned on, and now I can go ahead and record this once more. So this time, I'll say relative return. And again, if you want to, you can add a shortcut key, control shift A, and I'll just go ahead and hit OK. So it starts recording my actions. And again, I'll perform these same actions here. taking the ending price over the beginning price, minus one, and then I'll hit enter. And as I said before, if you use the mouse to copy down, uh, it will code that differently than if you use the keyboard. So this time I'm going to use the keyboard and actually using the keyboard to copy down is the better approach. It makes it more flexible, more dynamic. So what I'll do is go to the left, control and the down arrow key to find the end of the column, move back over to the right, control, shift, up, control, D. So that's the series of shortcuts with the keyboard to sort of find the end of the column and copy down using control D. And again, once more, I'll just add some fill color on this just to change this a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and stop recording. View macros, stop recording. So now we have stopped recording this and I'll sort of undo what I did just so I can show you that this works. So for example, here, if I, if I run this, Control Shift A, you can see, of course it works in the S&P column, but when I move over to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I wanna see if it works here, Control Shift a. Sure enough, it works. And you notice it also stopped copying where the data stopped. If I had used the mouse to copy down, it would have continued on through row 36. So it was best to use the keyboard shortcuts to do the copying. All right. If you like this, you should check out the VBA courses that we offer.